punch them and kick them. Visit the Mesozoic era. Punch them and kick them were quite the team. When working together, they were a dream. They always lent a helping hand and were well loved throughout the land. But if angered, you don't want to know the punches and kicks they would throw. Once upon a time, there were two twin goop boys named Punchem and Kickem. They were full of life and vigor, always running about and kicking up fun and sometimes mischief. <laughs> the two of them had so much energy, it was impossible for them to sit still unless they were so exhausted they couldn't keep their eyes open, which was rare. Together, they could do almost anything, especially if it involved helping others. They were very generous with their time and loved to make the other goops happy. They built fences, dug ditches, mowed lawns, built forts, climbed trees, and had one adventure after another. Punch'em and Kick'em had to keep busy. They needed to use up all their energy every day, or else they got frustrated and maybe a little angry. It was as if they woke up with a giant fireball of energy in their stomachs every day. And if they weren't moving around all day long, some of the fireball was left, and it made them feel fiery and frustrated. When Punch'em and Kick'em felt fiery and frustrated, they threw punches and kicks. Sometimes their punches and kicks went right through the walls knocked over lamps, and every once in a while, they would punch or kick another group. This never went over well. The other goops made sure to steer clear of punch em and kick em when they were fiery and frustrated. No one wanted a fist in the eye or a foot in the belly. One blazing summer day, when the sun was on fire, Punch'em and Kick'em decided to find some cool relief in the Raging River. The Raging River ran through Goop World, and it moved fast. It looked like it went on forever. It had many little swimming holes hidden along its shore, and Punch'em and Kick'em knew them all. On hot days, they loved to go to Oak Hole. Oak Hole was a hidden swimming hole that had a large oak tree hanging over it, creating an umbrella from the sun. Raging River, here we come, exclaimed Punchem as he shot a fist in the air. Wahoo, replied Kickum, kicking up his foot. Raging River, I want to come too. It's so hot, they heard a whiny little voice say. Both Punch'em and Kick'em turned and looked around and saw Wynita standing behind them. They almost always had fun with Wynita, except when she whined. Punch'em and Kick'em glanced at each other and nodded. And then Punch'em said, Okay, Wynita, uh, you can come, but only if you promise not to whine about anything, even if it is hot. Wynita thought about this for a second and said, Okay, but what if... Punch'em cut her off. There are no what ifs, Wynita. Just no whining, period, okay? Wynita very much wanted to go to the Raging River. So she said, Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I promise. Excellent said Punch'em and Kick'em in unison. The three of them set off in the baking sun until they came to the edge of the raging river. They walked along the river, ducking under any tree they could find to avoid the sun until they finally came to Oak Hole, where it was shady and cool. They all plopped down on the ground immediately 
and felt the cool earth beneath them. This feels so good, exclaimed Wainita in an effort not to whine. It does, said Kickum as he sat up and looked around. Let's go swimming. Yes, let's, said Wainita as she ran toward the water. Last one in is a rotten egg. The three of them raced towards the swimming hole and plunged right in. As they splashed about in the water, Wainita looked up at the oak tree above them and said, Look, there's a rope swing. There was a rope swing they had never seen before, hanging right near the edge of the water, and it looked like marvelous fun. I'm going to go out on it first, called out Kickum. No, I want to go first, said Punchum. Wainita just laughed. <laughs> she didn't care about being first as long as she got her turn. Kickum and Punchum both raced for shore and ran towards the rope swing. They both grabbed it with one hand. I got it first, said Punchum. No, I got it first. No, I did. They both held tight. Punchum started to punch the air with his other hand, and Kickum started to kick the air. They were both flailing about while holding tightly to the rope swing. They began to rock back and forth, back and forth, until suddenly the swing took off and swung them out right over the raging river, where the rope swing shook them loose. Wainita watched in awe as Punchum and Kickum plunged into the raging river and disappeared. Chapter 2 Punchum and Kickum were both strong swimmers, so they immediately surfaced to the top of the chilly water. Punchum watched as the current swept up Kickum and took him sailing down the river. Kickum, wait for me! We can't be separated! He yelled out over the rushing water. I'm trying! Kickum called back. Kickum saw a large tree branch float by and he grabbed onto it. Then he used his legs to kick backward, hoping to slow himself down until Punchum could catch up. As Punchum sped by, Kickum stuck out the tree branch and they both held tight. We did it! We're together! beamed Kickum. We did! But now we have to go back to shore and get back to Wainita, exclaimed Punchum. They both looked over at the shore as the river continued to carry them along. Nothing looked familiar. The landscape was vast and mountainous. They didn't recognize any of the plants or trees. There was a strange feeling in the air. A feeling of another time. This doesn't look right whispered Punchum, who was starting to feel a little bit uneasy. Kickum looked up at the landscape again. He knew they weren't in Goop World. He studied a group of trees as they floated by. There was something strange about them. He remembered seeing something similar in one of his history books. There's something about this landscape. I don't know what it is, but it reminds me. Of the Mesozoic era, he whispered to Kickum. The what? answered Kickum, who never paid attention to history books. The Mesozoic era, the time when dinosaurs lived, replied Punchum. Kickum could feel his heart beat a little faster. Punchum was usually right about these things, but this didn't make any sense. But we can't be in dinosaur times. That's impossible, said Kickum. I don't know. I don't know. But something is strange, said Punchum quietly. The two of them held on to the log a little tighter. Punchum scanned the horizon again, looking for clues, for some sign of life. And then he saw it. Far above a very tall tree in the distance, he saw an enormous rope-like tail that popped up for a moment and then disappeared. Then it swung up again. Punchum clutched Kickum's hand, pointed, and said, Look. 
they both turned in the direction of the tallest tree and watched as what looked to be a dinosaur tail swung high above it and waved around. Kickham shook his head, hoping to wake up from a dream, but he didn't. I think that must be the tail of a Diplodocus, said Punchum. They have the longest tails, and they can be over 40 feet. Punchum and Kickham listened as they heard a deep, growling roar come from the shore. We have to get out of here. We don't belong here, said Kickham. Let's go to shore and find our way out now. Punchum had to agree that they should get out. They had no place in the Mesozoic era as two small goops, but they had no idea how to escape. Okay, okay, let's go to shore and make a plan, Punchum said as he began furiously paddling towards the shore. Kickham kicked as hard as he could. It took everything they had to get them out of the raging river and up onto the shore. They pulled themselves onto the opposite side of the river from the Diplodocus, and plopped themselves down to catch their breath. They looked across the river and saw the Diplodocus stick his head up above the tree and look around. He was quite a bit in the distance. I don't think he can see us, whispered Punchum. Punchum and Kickham looked at each other, and they both used their brave eyes. They used brave eyes when they felt scared. It made them feel braver. There was a thunderous cracking sound in the tree above them. Punchum and Kickham looked up to see the face of an enormous Torvosaurus staring down at them. Chapter 3 The Torvosaurus opened his mouth and roared. His mouth was a huge black never-ending cave lined by razor-sharp teeth. The Torvosaurus was monstrous and fierce and far more terrifying than anything that Punchum and Kickham had ever seen in any book. He looked like an 8,000-pound lizard that was over 30 feet tall. He had immense hind legs that could power him along At 20 miles per hour, one of his teeth was bigger than both Punchum and Kickham put together. All of these facts flew through Punchum's head as he was eye to eye with the Torvosaurus. Punchum had been fascinated by dinosaurs for years, and he knew almost everything about them, but he certainly didn't know how to escape one. He never thought he would actually meet one. Before he even knew what he was doing, Punchum turned his head towards the Torvosaurus, looked him straight in the eye, and said, Um, Mr. Torvosaurus Dinosaur? My name is Punchum, and I am a goop. This is Kickum, my goop twin. I know you are probably thinking of swallowing us whole, and I just wanted to let you know that I have a much better idea for you. You see, if you swallow us, we will land in your stomach and we will punch and kick relentlessly. That is what we do. We punch and kick, hence our names. You won't like it. You will feel like you've swallowed a beehive. I can promise you it won't be worth it. What I'm going to do instead is recommend that you go after that Diplodocus, over there, grazing on the other side of the river, said Punchum, as he pointed in the direction of the Diplodocus, whose tail could be seen swinging above a tree. She will be a much more satisfying meal, and you won't feel like a beehive in your stomach. Kickum was in awe as he listened to his brother. He didn't move a muscle. He just moved his eyes back and forth between Punchum and the Tovasaurus, watching them intently. He had no idea that Punchum was so clever. The Tovasaurus stared down at Punchum and Kickum, 
and a silent tension hung in the air. No one had ever communicated with the Tovasaurus like this, and he was stunned into silence. He considered what Punchum had said. He hated bees, and he couldn't even imagine swallowing them. No one moved until the silence was broken by the Diplodocus on the other side of the river, who swung his tail and took down a tree with one swoop. The Tovasaurus turned his head, gazed across the river at the Diplodocus, and then looked back at Punchum and Kickham, who hadn't moved a centimeter. They were barely breathing. Then he turned on his powerful hind legs and sped across the river as if it were a rain puddle, straight in the direction of the Diplodocus. Punchum and Kickham looked at each other, and then Kickham reached out and gave his brother an enormous hug. Punchum, I had no idea. You were so brilliant. You saved our lives, he whispered. Punchum beamed with pride. He could barely even believe what had just happened. Then he turned to Kickham and said, We gotta get out of here before something like that happens again. We may not be so lucky next time. Kickham quickly nodded his head in agreement. The river. I think we need to get in the river and have it take us far far away, said Kickham. So Punchum and Kickham set about building a tiny raft to take them down the raging river. It didn't take long before they hopped aboard and were floating away. As they moved down the river, they could hear the sounds of the Diplodocus and Torvasaurus battle fade into the distance. They slept through the night as they floated along. Punchum woke up first and looked at the surroundings. Everything looked different. He knew they were no longer in the Jurassic era of dinosaurs when the Torvasaurus lived. But he wasn't quite sure where they were. Punchum tried to remember the photos from his dinosaur books. I know this looks familiar, but where is it? He asked himself. Then he remembered. It's the late Cretaceous period, he said out loud. Kick him, wake up, wake up. We aren't in Jurassic times anymore, said Punchum. That is excellent news, exclaimed Kickham. No, not really, sighed Punchum. We're in the late Cretaceous period when the Giganotosaurus lived. Kickham's eyes almost popped out of his head and his heartbeat skyrocketed just thinking about a Giganotosaurus. His thoughts were interrupted by a crashing tree that fell across the river. Kickham and Punchum looked up at the tree, and at the very end of it, they saw the tip of a Giganotosaurus claw. Chapter 4 Kickham grabbed Punchum's arm and put a finger to his lips, motioning silence. The Giganotosaurus hadn't seen them yet. Kickham silently slid off the raft into the water with Punchum close behind. They dipped under the river and headed to the shore as a giant Giganotosaurus foot crashed into the river. The giant dinosaur looked down and saw a tiny raft floating down the river. He had never seen anything like it. He stood on his two hind legs as he reached down and picked up the raft with the tip of his claw as if it were a cotton ball. Punchum and Kickham spied from beneath the cycad plant on the river shore. They watched as the giant dinosaur held up the raft and examined it. He looked puzzled. Punchum smiled as he remembered that the Giganotosaurus had the brain the size of a banana, which wasn't very big for an 18,000-pound dinosaur and was not as intelligent as the T-Rex. He can't be very smart. He'll never figure out what that is, Punchum thought to himself. Sure enough, 
the Giganotosaurus flung the tiny raft with a flick of his claw and it went soaring across the sky. He seemed to have lost interest and Punchum breathed a sigh of relief (sighs) as they watched the Giganotosaurus move to the other side of the river with his tail extending behind him. He took a few steps and then he stopped and turned back and looked at the river. Punchum and Kickum hadn't moved from their hiding spot beneath the cycad. The great dinosaur lifted up his head high into the air and smelled. He smelled long and hard as he looked around. Punchum remembered his dinosaur books again. Although the Giganotosaurus had a small brain, he had an excellent sense of smell. Did he smell them? A leaf from the cycad plant they were hiding beneath slowly reached down and covered Punchum and Kickum. Kickum was about to kick right through it when Punchum whispered to him, Wait, I think the cycad is helping us. Then he pointed towards the Giganotosaurus, who had lost the scent and was turning away. As he stomped away into the distance, Punchum and Kickum looked up at the cycad and nodded in thanks. Then the cycad spoke. You're welcome, but he will be back and he will smell you again. You need to leave. We know, sighed Punchum and Kickum in unison. But we just don't know how, finished up Punchum. The river, it is the only way, replied the cycad. Go now, you have a head start. We will help you, said the plant as she gently swatted them towards the river with one of her leaves. Punchum and Kickum slid into the river. They decided not to build another raft. They didn't have time to waste. They decided to use a nearby log instead and start down the river. As they floated along, Punchum and Kickum kept a close eye on the shore. Off in the faraway distance, they could see the head of the Giganotosaurus towering above a grove of trees. He kept lowering it up and down as if he was feeding. Punchum, I'm cold and tired. Do you think we could go to shore for just a little bit to warm up? Asked Kickum. Punchum thought about it. He was cold too. And the Giganotosaurus looked as if he was very far away and as if he had found some food. It seemed safe enough. Okay, just for a little bit, but not for very long. We have to keep moving because it looks like we haven't left the Cretaceous period yet, Punchum replied. Punchum and Kickum quickly paddled ashore, pulled up their log, and lay down in the warm sunlight. The sun was toasty and comforting, and soon the two of them were snoring away. Now that they were no longer in the water, their scent was much easier to pick up. Off in the distance, the Giganotosaurus lifted his huge head and caught an unusual smell. It was the scent he had lost earlier, the scent of goops. He turned and stood on his gargantuan hind legs, and he began to run. He ran at 30 miles per hour and crashed through tree after tree. He wasn't going to let this scent escape him again. The ground shook like an earthquake as he plowed over the terrain. Punchum woke up first as fear shot through his body. Kick him, get up now! As Kickum sleepily rubbed his eyes, he asked, Is it an earthquake? No, it's the Giganotosaurus, and he is headed this way. Quick, follow me, he said as he grabbed Kickum's hand. Punchum pulled the two of them straight beneath the nearest cycad. They quickly wrapped her arms around them, blocking all scent. The Giganotosaurus came to a screeching halt when he lost the scent. The earth stopped rumbling, and he was furious. He had lost the scent, and he had no idea how. He slowly looked around and saw nothing unusual. 
As he turned and lumbered away, the Psycad whispered to punch him and kick him and said, Trust me, it's your only chance. Then she spun around and around as fast as she could on her stout trunk until she was moving so quickly she couldn't be stopped. Her arms picked up punch him and kick him and flung them high into the air where they flew over the Cretaceous period and back to Goop World. The Giganotosaurus looked up to see two tiny creatures flying high and far. He didn't give them a second thought as they disappeared on the horizon. Punch him and kick him landed right back on the edge of the river where they had left Wainita. They looked anxiously around in search of the Giganotosaurus until Punchum said, Don't worry, we've left the Cretaceous period far behind. Let's go tell Wainita all about our dinosaur adventure. But Wainita was nowhere to be found. Wainita was lost on the Great Wall of China. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.